back everybody welcome back and uh dude has informed me of beehives not growing or spawning at night yeah that's what the the word, the word on the street which, is which i think it's fine because I, don't, I think the trees grow so much less at night than they do during the day anyway is that true i don't know it seems to be true whenever it's nighttime these trees ain't spawning nearly as much i don't i've never actually paid attention you're probably right um, I need dark oak. Dark oak. Uh, for we got some up here. Oh uh, uh, the... no! The, all the dark oak is back. Oh, yeah. Here, follow me. It's over here somewhere. Yeah. All these trees are right here. Oh, okay. Nice. So I've been like chopping them down when we need the dark oak and then wait until I get at least a two by two and then planting sets of trees and then gotcha. planting it back again. Uh, so you've never, you've gone to college, but you never graduated from college, right? No. You never took any college classes at all? Not unless you count like AP high school cl classes that give you college credit. Uh, no, not directly. I guess the class. So maybe you had the same thing for my. What was your uh, graduating GPA? I uh, don't remember. It wasn't a 4.0. I remember that. But it was close. Were you, it was in, like were you a National Honor Society? I don't know. No, I wasn't. So National Honor Society in high school was one of those things that uh, you got into as based on your grades and I guess recommendation from I don't, yeah, I don't think I was recommended well, probably. I, well, I don't quite know what it was about. I remember my freshman year or after my freshman year, so my sophomore year based on my freshman year standings, my GPA I guess was good enough. And I remember it being very confused because the, the person who ran the National Honor Society, and I don't think it was something you applied to either. It was just something that, you know, you like got. Yeah. But my the person who ran the National Honor Society program uh, w wanted to have a meeting with me, and I was like, okay. And he sat down and basically told me I was at that point in my life I was too immature to embody like the National Honor Society gift or whatever, it's like whatever the fuck it was, <laughs> Member membership. I don't know. So I was basically told I, I was not allowed to be part of the National Honor Society my first. Uh, uh, the first opportunity that I that I had, which I, I don't know how normal this is. I remember being like, okay, well, fuck this place then. Like, I don't give a shit, you know, about this, right? whatever. My parents were a little upset. Um, I was not quite as upset. But so then and the next year, so maybe, so I guess you did have to apply. So maybe I apply, I must have applied for it. I must have had the grades, but I didn't have the maturity level to, to be part of it. Cause the next year my parents were like, so you got to apply for National Honor Society. And I was like, hell no, I don't, I don't need to apply for this garbage, you know, <laughs> Fuck them. but they finally made me apply for it. And I, I did finally get it. Uh, I got my National Honor Society so I could say that I was a National Honor Society graduate. Though so, uh, the thing is, like you said, you had close to a four point. I did not have super close to a four point. I was like, I always had really good grades. I remember that. Well, I, don't I was know like the, three, I can't six remember. or three seven or something like that. But you know, well, I said I wasn't four. I think I was a three point eight when I graduated. I think see, I, see, I don't remember now. I, I just remember, that's higher than what mine even was. I'm surprised there was no like, you know, just National Honor Society. I didn't apply for anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do any of that. I didn't, I didn't have like a guidance counselor that helped me to understand what I should or shouldn't be doing. I didn't have any kind of college fund. I didn't apply to any colleges. Um, I took the SAT. I did that. And I got a good score on the SAT. I remember everyone was like, oh, it's so high. Uh, but then I did nothing with that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my high school experience. Like I didn't I, I worked full time. Um, third shift, and so I would, and I and I moved down on my own too. So I was living on my own, still going to high school and working full time, third shift, and then like leaving work and going to school. <clears throat> so, hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I I will be the first to say, uh, unless it was somewhere in my college applications that it mattered, which probably did in some way, shape, or form to some like recruitment person. But National Honor Society did not help me achieve anything in my life that I know of. Um, uh -huh. I think most of those things are kind of a big, a big sham. But at least I give National Honor Society 
the concept that it's free. Because once you get into right. college level, I've I've always had really good uh, GPAs in all my my college degrees that I've had so far. So I've always been invited to be inducted into the National Honors Chapter of whatever it is, Sigma Theta Phi or Sigma Theta Pi, whatever it is for the the nursing you know side or the engineering side, like had their own. And it always cracks me up because it's like, congratulations, here is your invite to this National Honor Society. Now just go log in and pay your membership dues. And I'm always so like, it's a it's a paid thing. Yeah, basically. it's a paid thing. And I'm trying to figure out because I've never, ever, ever paid for it. I've never thought that that was appropriate to pay for. I want to know if joining one of those whoa creeper hi buddy <laughs> that scared me uh i wanted to know if anybody's ever joined one of those societies and think it's actually helped them because i know many people that i work with there's a, i i think what they do is it's one of those things that it plays on your emotions by making you feel like you're part of something exclusive mm-hmm even though they don't, it doesn't really benefit you in the least because a lot of the people I work with, I know, did purchase their membership in a Sigma Theta, Sigma Theta Pi or Sigma Theta Tau. I think there's one's for bachelor's degree, one's for master's degree nursing um, because they just thought that it was like they had to. They were like, I, I was offered, like I couldn't let the opportunity like. I mean, I'm sure the stuff like this happens all the time. And it's not just with this type of thing, like where you feel like, because it feels like it's just prestigious, right? But really, it's not. It's something you paid to. If you didn't pay, you wouldn't have it. But isn't um, it, isn't it almost one of those things? Like, shouldn't it be when it when it's based off of your, you know, college degree? It, it, it's it, shouldn't it be illegal in certain way, shape, or form? <laughs> like, I don't like. I don't. I, and, the only, and the reason I bring it up is because I graduated with my doctoral degree over a year ago now. I just mm. got in the mail a, an invitation to join their society. And they made it look like this prestigious invitation and how I was like recommended for, you know, due to my leadership experience for admission into this like elite group and i'm just like and it literally says at the bottom here is your code and it gives you it's like a coupon code almost at the bottom like, that's my <laughs> my my personalized invitation is this coupon code at the bottom just log on and go pay your 95 dollar one-time fee and i will say that's the cheapest one i've seen of all the of all the places but i still just yeah um i remember I was in something in high school, which was basically bullshit, just like you're describing. It was called, like, Who's Who of American High School Students. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's so many Who's Who publications that exist, and those are, like, just absolutely ridiculous to me. It's a scam. Like, it's a total fucking scam. Because, like, the first thing they do after you get, like, added or whatever is they try to sell you, like a yearbook for other for all the who's who yep. students <laughs> yep and it's like a bunch of people want to like, go look at the list of all the who's who people well i mean yeah that's the dumbest thing it's like make sure you have this so you can show your grandparents basically like look at me here's my name in this fucking book with a bunch of people i've never heard of like so that's already dumb but then they also have a credit card my first credit card was, that was who's who who's who among uh, debt yes, collectors absolutely anonymous. it's like who's who is gonna ruin your credit uh it's like <laughs> i mean it was so, and so yeah my first credit card was it had, i think it was a 500 dollars credit limit and like super fucking high interest rate it was a who's who card um yeah I, that shit's I, just a scam I, and i want to know like how did that stuff become accepted and not thought of as a scam like i mean it's no, definitely nobody praying. thinks of these honor societies as a scam even though because because th there's benefits surrounding them they always claim that there's all these benefits that you get since i've never joined one i can't guarantee that the benefits are actually beneficial in the least or exclusive by any means right but i, I just I, I mean can we just start one of those i think so I mean, let's do it. Let's just let's just get one and like <laughs> let's just get one. Let's just get one and do some money. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the process is on something like that. 
Oh, you gotta go get like right. I mean, it's like it's like I mean, we've probably I'm sure we've talked about um uh the Better Business Bureau before. Right. That's just a scam. It's the same thing. It's just a fucking scam. Like all the businesses that are listed in the Better Business Bureau are just paying. Like I know whenever whenever I ran the web hosting company, I was a member of the Better Business Bureau and I paid them my dues every year. And like if some if a customer complained. All you had to do is, if you, as long as you were a member, a paying member, you were just like, nah. And they're like, all right, well, nah. He said nah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So why do people absolutely. always talk about filing complaints at the Better Business Bureau? I don't know. People don't realize that the Better Business Bureau is a goddamn scam. Like, I guess. That's the only thing I could figure I is the they don't business know. Better Business Bureau was like partially gov- – I never really looked into absolutely it. Absolutely not. Took it's it a face- total for-profit organization. I, I took it at face value and people are always like, oh, I think you got scammed by this company. Come back, contact the Better Business Bureau. They'll get them shut down. Like, nope. it's, you nope. constantly see that sentiment. Absolutely not. Like, it is just a thing full of people that are paying for their membership – and as long as you're paying for your membership, no one can touch you. Let's, and the moment, like, let's start the, like the best m- business bureau. We're just gonna <laughs> yeah. be better than the better business bureau. Um, like for me, whenever whenever I stopped paying, like my rating just started going down because, like, I would people would complain, but I wouldn't get a kind of notification from the better business bureau, so I couldn't be like, but nah, <laughs> but, um, but nah, man, nah. Yeah, no, like, he didn't say nah because he doesn't pay us anymore, so we didn't tell him exactly. He had to respond. So, so you win, customer. Basically, um, I mean, eventually they do con- contact you after so many complaints or whatever, but they don't contact you with like every complaint and stuff. It's it's the whole thing's a damn scam. Well, I guess isn't that kind of the way? God, what a sad society we live in. But like uh, Experian and um, Equifax and all that stuff, all the credit reporting bureaus. Are they just kind of like their own thing that people have decided to take stock in and say, well, I mean, they're right. So let's base people's lives around whatever this company just invented. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Because that's not government regulated at all. Not that I necessarily want it to be government regulated anymore because that almost seems scary. Or well, they ain't government ways, regulated. But this is, you know, how the Republican wants, uh, Republicans always say they want smaller government. They finally convinced me. <laughs> how about no government? <laughs> it might be okay for a while just to let the, let the country have a reset. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's just there's in every walk of life there's one of these there's some kind of fucking scam organization that yeah, that exists. But I just don't understand like the ones in like the Better Business Bureau for one that one kind of shocks me. I, just, I haven't done enough research to understand on that one. I, that almost seems kind of like you know the the ones I'm talking about with the you know who's who amongst American high school students or any of the you know uh, honor societies that you earn your way into. Like the colleges sub- are supporting that in some way, shape, or form. That means. Basically, yeah. I mean, because like, like, I mean, where did how the, else where did I have the... access to my grades to know I was eligible? Right. I didn't like, send my who, transcripts. Who gave who's people. who my fucking info? Yeah, and, and and you almost think that how is this not crossing some ethical boundary then? Right. Oh, don't sell. Uh, don't sell my the, all the information I freely gave to Facebook. Oh, you're a terrible person for selling it to somebody else. But oh, a school. Hell yeah, let's join this honor society. <laughs> Add it to my resume, yeah. baby. Like it uh, is going to earn me so much something in the future. So much something. So much something. And it's so fun. I read a, I remember reading a forum post once. I think it was on like one of the nurses' blogs. And somebody was like, you know, has anybody ever actually joined, you know, one of these societies and a lot of people were like oh yeah i did and it was a great like networking experience and then other people were like yeah i did it did nothing for me except took a bunch of my money and then one person was like the smartest person i'd ever thought of um was like what i did was i put on my resume invited to blah 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 (laughs) so she goes i wasn't lying if i never accepted but it's like it shows that i was just as qualified to get it as the person who said that they got it i just didn't pay them the money so maybe it makes me the smart smart one right yeah i was like i should add that to my my uh, resume invited to you know sigma theta tau sigma theta pi Yeah, all I did with that fucking who's who's credit card is took my girlfriend to the mall and bought her clothes. What made you get it? 
because I was dumb. I mean, was it was it that like it was a credit card offer and you were just young and like sweet credit card offer like Yeah, no, it was my very very first credit card offer in my life and I was like fuck, I don't have a credit card, but I could. Dude, I you know how many credit cards I had when I was a kid? No, when I was a kid. When I was like 18 years old because I went to Michigan State University for my first semester of college and they had students had jobs like signing people up for credit cards, but you would get like God, they used to do it at the bars and stuff all the time, too. And I finally started learning to put fake names and shit on this stuff. But I remember going to bars when they would give you, like, two free packs of cigarettes for signing up for a credit card. Wow. And wow. we would get, God, I remember at the one bar getting two free packs of cigarettes. A different bar, we got something alcohol. Related. It was like they'd buy you, like, two rounds or something like that. Um, and the people at Michigan State were always giving you, like, stupid swag, but we, all, like, ate that shit up, of course, you know, it was like, look, you get this, you know, this t-shirt and this ticket to some free concert somewhere, you know, type of deal. And right. we signed up for some of that stuff because, like, with, like, real information and a real credit card. Luckily, I was smart enough not to ever use it. I think when I got it, I, like, immediately called and canceled it because I was like, the fuck did I just get myself into with a credit card, you know? I remember, do you remember the whole, uh, it seemed like a lot of places did this. Like if you sign up for AOL, will you get a free computer? Oh, uh, I don't remember ever a free computer one. I know I had a shit ton of AOL discs lying around because I would collect them and actually use them back in three and a half inch discs were needed. And you just erase AOL and had free blank floppies. <laughs> I remember there was this, this one where it was um, like, it was only in Atlanta. So I had to drive to Atlanta to get it. But as if you signed up for three years of AOL and gave them a good credit card, then you got the free computer. That's all you had to do. Sign up for three years of AOL. Did they give any statistics on said computer? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like it was a decent computer. Like I used this computer for years, actually, that I got. Um, in fact, it broke down and uh, I took it back and they replaced it. Really? Um, like, yeah, it was like, you know, six months after buying it or whatever. And it was a standard it. AOL price, like nothing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's here's what I did though. I'm embarrassed to say. Um, I signed up for a new credit card. I went, I gave them this credit card, and I immediately canceled the credit card. Okay. Um, so I never paid for a single month of AOL. And they never like came after you? No. And replaced it. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they replaced it too. But no, no, they never I mean, I don't know how those type of things work. They probably got paid from like immediately. So they probably never knew the computer salesman that I did this. Like, I can't imagine the communication between this, like computer store and AOL was that great. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't remember that. I do remember that. That's a pretty big one. I remember si signing up for Gavalia. Was that the coffee company that it was? I don't know this one. You'd sign up for your first month. It was a, like a subscription based coffee company, but it was back when you had to like fill out the paperwork from a magazine. You know, they didn't have like an online sign, <laughs> right. sign up through. Um, but it was a subscription based coffee company and you get like a pound of coffee a month. And the very first month was like 50% off or something. And they'll send you a free coffee machine. Okay. But you could then you could immediately cancel again. So I remember signing up for it and for like four dollars or whatever, I got a coffee machine and a pound of coffee and like canceled it to, you know, keep my <laughs> right. You know, keep my coffee machine and stuff. And I remember like forgetting like doing some of those things before and forgetting to cancel the because they never make it easy to cancel. It's kinda like Sirius nah, nah, nah. XM radio, you know. You can't just like immediately right. call and cancel it. You have to wait until like the very last day of your billing cycle is the only the first time you're eligible to cancel. And by the way, if you don't cancel that day, you could charge for a whole other month that you can't cancel until the very last day of that billing cycle again, you know. Right. Yeah, it's always some bullshit like that. Um, don't do that stuff. How well. many Columbia music record things did you sign up for? Oh, my dad was really big into that. I don't know why. I guess they were cheap. They were really cheap for CDs. They were. And stuff, so yeah, yeah, yeah. my but, dad used to get like tapes and probably even like eight tracks. I don't know. I don't know how far back Columbia goes. I remember we had tons of tapes and he was always a member. But then like I remember getting to the age where I could sign up and then just signing up tons of times and taking the shit and never paying them anything. I don't, I don't think I ever paid them anything because ever. It was always like buy 10 CDs for the price of one or something like that for your first month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
No, I, I remember them being like a really good deal and not even understanding like if I was paying full price. It was way less than going to like the FYE in the mall or, right, you know, whatever. So I didn't understand why those music stores were so popular at, in places like malls. I remember for the love of God, I wanted to work at one so bad, though, because I thought it would be so awesome to work at a music store. But I think really? that's I watched a lot of Empire Records. Like, Huh. May they make, they make it look exciting and fun in that movie. So I thought, oh, music stores are going to be awesome, you know? Yeah. Probably good for dating life, actually. I mean, it might be. It's like, but it's retail. Uh, <gasps> the elusive beehive. Oh, you got one. I need somebody to go back and watch my videos through the last beehive we got and tell me the exact percentage. <laughs> I, I must know. Just don't count the ones at night. Yeah, I don't count the ones at night, and I still guarantee it's like 1%. I just less. forgot about scaffolding, and I just saw scaffolding again and remembered that it exists. And uh, that'd be really a, a nice for me gathering this um, glowstone that I need. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot about scaffolding as well, now that I think about it. I also couldn't figure out how to use it. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> that, was, that was a problem. Yeah, I don't know, but working at FYE is more just like, you know, retail retail i guess it wouldn't be that exciting right now that i look back on it wouldn't it be, be actually super boring <laughs> well working at a record store yeah because wouldn't you just like if, especially if you worked at one of the mainstream ones like uh, wouldn't you just hear the store brand record i remember working at starbucks and having a lot of fun at starbucks but getting really bored with they had like a three hour cd that you were required to play their store music and oh, yeah. even though it was a three hours but it's listening to basically the same tracks two to three times in a in a shift, depending on how long you work that day, right. every single day. And you like you get to the point where like you can probably like sing the next oh, song. Oh, you can sing that. You know exactly cause... what's coming up next because it's there. And it's just uh, God, I can't imagine working at an actual record store and having it be like, oh, you got to play these hits today because this is the CD we're trying to sell. So, you know, yeah. back in like the late nineties, early two thousands, like keep playing the Britney Spears music, like keep it popping. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be nightmare. God, we should have scaffolding somewhere. We probably should. I, I wouldn't know where, where did we use it at? I don't know. Probably in that thing we got done building just now, which would have been good for, there's there's several occasions where we probably well, should have been using this guy for we that we weren't. The last season. I'm trying to even think, did we use it this season or was it last season? No, yeah, no, it, it didn't come out until this season. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain. I'm trying to think what we used it for then. Maybe we used it in the end? We used it in building the lighthouse, I think, too. Ah, that is true. You think it's over there at the lighthouse? Maybe. I had to make more fireworks because we were out. We need to make sure we kill more creepers. God, I haven't been over here. Uh, there's so some long. here, yeah. 30 some. Yeah, we had like a lot, didn't we? Yeah, I thought we did. I thought we had a few. We, we scaffolded all the way up to the top of that where the, we got pranked too that one time. Way up, way up in the sky. That I forgot. That's still there. <laughs> yep. Is it up there? <laughs> Could be, I guess. I got thirty six. That's probably enough. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I should make some more. I don't remember how to make it. <laughs> it took you three rockets to get up here. A high skeleton. Oh, did you go up there? Yeah. I was trying to see if we actually had anything that. To... I don't even see a. Um. A chest or anything up here. It's easy to make, I think. I don't remember now how to make it, but I remember it being easy to make. Uh, I'm going to make some of this and go to the nether and see if I can find more glowstone. I've almost got all that glowstone done in there. I know you haven't been over there in a while because you've been playing with bees. But yeah. I'm getting I, close. Yeah, I have not been over there inside. I mean, what else? So oh. we got, you got the dark oak. That's needed. Yeah, yeah. And then the then the glowstone on the sides. Um, sleep. But yeah. Oops. 
Wow. <laughs> well, we probably end this episode here. <laughs> All right. Let us know if you were also in some society that you had to pay money for. Yeah, and, and if you're a sucker for doing so. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. See ya.